Well, good Wednesday morning to you. My name is Mike Hoffman, and welcome to Waves of Hope Chapel with the Canaveral Port Ministry. Uh, just bringing greetings to you from wherever you might be today, and uh, I hope today is a good day for you, whether it's morning or evening, you've finished your day maybe already, but uh, we're glad that you're here uh, joining us today with this time of uh, brief devotion. Uh, we think often of you who are working on the ships and our friends who may be back home now because of uh, COVID and all those crazy things like that. We're just, uh, we think of you, we pray for you. We want to encourage you and your families. And so uh, we're very thankful to be a part of your lives and as you are a part of ours and uh, very thankful for that. So my name is Mike Hoffman, glad to be with you today. And uh, may the joy of the Lord be your strength today as you trust in him, as you wait on him today. So uh, as I always do and encourage you to think about doing yourself is, is check in um, with someone else, uh, another friend who is a follower of Jesus perhaps, um, but check in at that heart level and help that friend know where you are in your heart. Uh, be, find that person, we call it the CO2 partner, a church of two or three maybe getting together and sharing in a brief way. It doesn't have to be long. It doesn't have to be uh, anything other than what, what you sense prompting to, to share with that person. But share what is it at the emotion, the heart level um, is uh, on your heart and mind today. Uh, and that could be, I use the acrostic sachet, S A S. Uh, H-E-T, kind of like sachet with dancing, but uh, this is describing emotions, S-A-S-H-E-T, and that is sad, angry, scared, happy, excited, or tender. Um, and it could be any range of emotion that you have and you're experiencing at the heart level for yourself today. Uh, for me, um, I am describing my time as my, my feeling right now is I'm excited about what God is doing in uh, my wife and ours lives as we prepare for next things in ministry and life. And uh, we're excited that we have a fourth um, grandbaby coming. So very excited about that and being able to uh, share in the joy of our families. Uh, the birth of a child coming soon. So um, so that's my sense of heart right now and, and today. Uh, what about you? What would you check in as? I'm in, as I would say, to my CO2 partner. Um, but what about you at the heart level? Where are, what's, what's on your heart today? What emotion would you describe as where you are today? Sad? Are you angry or scared, um, maybe you're happy or excited, or maybe you're tender uh, in the sense of uh, being concerned for someone else um, or a circumstance in your life. I hope you'll do that as it provides for a, a fuller spiritual healthiness in your life and in that brother or sister in Christ that you get with. Uh, Jesus said, where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in their midst. So I hope you'll uh, be thinking about that as you go along. And uh, as we look today, we'll be looking at Genesis chapter 42. We continue our study through the book of Genesis. And uh, I know you've been blessed as I have to see what God's doing and how he unveils his plan um, uh, all through Genesis so let's begin with a word, brief word of prayer. Father, we thank you for today. Lord, we thank you that uh, you have knit us together and we are fearfully and wonderfully made. And Lord, that you, um, um, you have given us um, your spirit, your Holy Spirit as a comforter to us, um, that when we come to you and we are uh, 
born again into that new life. We are a new creation in Christ that you give us um, the blessing of the Holy Spirit who wants to come alongside us and teach us and speak to us. And so, Lord, help us to be ever mindful that you are present with us. You never leave us or forget about us. You don't give up on us. And you nothing can snatch us out of your hand. And so I thank you for today, for uh, dear friends who are watching, who receive this, and that you would encourage their hearts today, wherever they are, in Christ's name, amen. Well, we're going to look at Genesis chapter 42 today, and uh, I'm going to give you a real quick recap. I'm not going to take time to read the entire chapter. I want to encourage you to do that as um, this, is, uh, this is an amazing story that's unfolding uh, with the life of Jacob and his sons, and now specifically jo Joseph and what's going on in God's plan and God's sovereignty, all of these things are happening. So just to recap, I'm going to tell you very quickly in Genesis 42, Jacob tells his sons to go to Egypt and buy food. Why? As you have read already, there's a famine in the land and, and uh, that they need to prepare for that famine. And so uh, these sons, 10 of the 11 sons, uh, Jacob holds Benjamin, the youngest, back for fear that some harm might come to him. But 10 of the sons go to Egypt. And there, Joseph, who is now governor, if you've read and followed, kept up with this, who is now a leader under Pharaoh, he's only second to Pharaoh in all of Egypt, and has seen that this famine is coming. And he's predicted that God's blessed him with that foresight. And, um, and so they have prepared and now they have all these granaries, storage of grain that is available for the, the famine that is now taking place. And so people are streaming to Egypt. The word is out. Egypt's got food. And so uh, Joseph uh, recognizes his brothers as they come to Egypt to get uh, this food, the grains of wheat and and, um, but they, the brothers didn't recognize him. And so in verse nine, it says, as Joseph recognized his brothers in the lineup, um, he remembered the dreams that were given to him. Remember the dreams that he shared with his brothers that enraged them saying that they would bow down to him. And the second dream saying that the sun and the moon and, and uh, the uh, she, uh, she's the wheat would all bow down to him, meaning uh, Jacob and his and uh, his wives would bow, bow down to Joseph. Um, those would happen. So he remembered those dreams that happened many, many years before, decades before. And, um, and there, as he remembered those dreams, it says he accuses those brothers without revealing himself to the brothers. He accuses them of being spies and throws them into prison for three days. Uh, he then brings them out in the third day of after being in prison, and he sends nine of his brothers back with food, uh, but keeps one of the brothers, Simeon, in prison. He binds Simeon up in front of the of these brothers in a very dramatic way and uh, puts him back in the prison, but sends these other brothers uh, on their way uh, back and told them, do not come back until they bring the youngest one, Benjamin, back with them uh, to prove that they are not spies. So Joseph sets this all in the place um, and, and there um, they uh, he tells them, don't come back unless Benjamin is with you. And then they experience uh, guilt for the harm they brought to, their, to the brother Joseph. And in verse 21, they said, they said to one another, surely we are being punished for our brother because of our brother. 
And so they experienced that personal guilt of what they had done to Joseph in throwing him into the well and taking him out of the well and selling him uh, to a caravan on their way to Egypt into slavery. And so fear and tension grow as they return back to their father, Jacob, and tell them what's happened and that Simeon is now in prison. And then to their surprise, as they open up the sacks of grain that had they had purchased from Egypt and from Joseph, when they open those sacks back up in front of their father, there are the pouches of silver that they had taken to buy the food. To their surprise and their fear and their shock, they see these pouches of silver in each of their sacks. So Reuben pleads with uh, his father Jacob to allow Benjamin to go back with them to Egypt so that they can prove that they're not spies and do as Joseph had said and have seek the release of Simeon, their brother, who's in Egypt. And, um, and so Jacob's response to that as we close uh, chapter 42 out is in verse 38. He, he refuses Reuben's pleas. And he says this, my son will not go down there with you. His brother is dead and he is the only one left. So Jacob stands firm and refuses to um, allow Benjamin to go back to Egypt. And that's where we see chapter 42 conclude. Here's a few takeaways I, I picked up from reading chapter 42 and all that happened here. And one is first that the Lord knows us before we know him. That the Lord knows us before we know him. And I see that in the fact that Joseph recognized his, son, his brothers as they come before him to buy food, but they don't recognize him. And um, I see that as a picture of Jesus. Uh, and Jesus sees who we are before we see who he is. All through the Gospels, we see that um, the Lord sees who others are before they know who he is. And what ama amazes me personally, friends, is that Jesus knows me. He knows my Kaufman through and through. He sees my heart of hearts. He knows my thoughts. And yet, Jesus says, I love you with an everlasting love. And that's true for you as well. Jesus knows you. He sees you right where you are today. And yet he says, I love you. And uh, I, I want you to follow me. Come follow me, friend. That's Jesus' call to you and to me. So that very first lesson is there. He knows us, who we are inside and out, and he still loves us. The second takeaway for me is that Repentance and restoration is often painful, but necessary. Repentance, turning away from something and being restored to something is often painful, but it's necessary. I remember uh, as a boy growing up and uh, my parent, my mother would take all six of us children to the government health clinic and to get our shots. I hated shots. I hated to get shots. And so, so much so that um, they would have to drag me into the room to get the shot. And I would grab on. I remembered one time grabbing the doorpost and say, no, no, screaming. Uh, I don't want to get the shot. It's going to be painful. I knew it was going to hurt. And so I didn't want that. And and finally, they'd push me in and I, they'd put me on the table and I'd be kicking and screaming. And, and one time... I will never forget the doctor said, if you move, you might die. And that, that froze me. <laughs> now, that sounds really harsh, I know. And you, some of you are going, how could a doctor say something like that? It certainly put a fear in me for I didn't want to die. But I also, uh, you know, the doctor knew that I needed that shot. Actually, there was truth in that. In fact, uh, the in those early years of uh, mumps and rubella and those things, they were deadly diseases and the shot was the cure. There was a little pain in that shot, 
but the cure was well worth it. And so uh, that's true for uh, relationships that you have and I have. Sometimes um, we have relationships that are broken, um, that have been um, abused or um, are, that, are, that are just because of conflict or other things. Um, and they need to be uh, mended, perhaps, uh, as much as it is possible. And so here, when Joseph remembered the dreams which he had dreamed about them, it says, the brothers, uh, Joseph didn't play games with his brothers. He could have revealed himself to his brothers right then and there. Uh, but God recalled the dreams to his mind and guided him to be an instrument for correction and restoration of the brothers. If uh, instead of revealing himself at that point, Joseph said, you are spies and made the brothers vulnerable. That created a sense of vulnerability in the lives of those brothers. 20 plus years earlier, the brothers acted in anger and jealousy when jo they sold Joseph into slavery. And now drastic measures were needed before true repentance and restoration could happen. So healing, hearing the truth can be painful, but it's the beginning point of healing. And this was the beginning point of restoration for Joseph and his brothers as they go along. God can and sometimes he must uh, think of ways to do things that are harsh to call us to go to where he wants us to be. Um, so let me say that again. God sometimes will take you through troubles and challenges so that he can take you to a place he wants you to be. And we shouldn't resent that. Um, it may be painful and um, at the time, but it's quite often because of the own hardness of our hearts that demand God to do things in our lives that are uh, challenging to us. Psalm 119.67 says, Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I keep your word, O Lord. Before I was afflicted, I would go astray. I offended the Lord, but now I keep your word. So that's a takeaway. Another takeaway for me is the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And Joseph said to his brothers, I fear God. I fear God. Joseph didn't want his brothers to fear him so much as that he wanted his brothers to trust him, but he wanted them to know that he feared God. And so he knew, uh, he was saying, I am accountable to God. And in saying that, and in being harsh with his brothers and making the demand that they bring back the young brother, he wanted them to know that they could trust him even in that. And so um, that's a good place to be, to have the fear of the Lord in your life. That is the beginning point of wisdom. Another takeaway for me is that we uh, don't learn so much just from our experiences but from reflecting on our experience, on our experiences. Let me say that again. We don't learn so much from just having an experience in our lives. We experience things day by day. But when we, we learn from reflecting on those experiences, um, the brothers determined as they, they spoke among themselves, we are truly guilty concerning our brother. So they had a point of reflection there as even they stood uh, before Joseph speaking in Hebrew, thinking that this, this Egyptian leader, Joseph, could not understand them. But there they're saying we're truly uh, guilty. We remember what we did to our brother. Their guilty conscience told them this, com this complicated mess was because of the way they treated Joseph before. 
And this was a good sign, uh, the quickness with which they associated their current dilemma with their the sin against Joseph meant they um, they often remembered that sin. Rem they, they had that on their mind. They knew it was there. Their conscience was pricked. And so um, they reflected on their experiences. So we don't learn from only experiences, but from, from reflecting on our experiences. Let me ask you this. Do you take time to hit the pause button and reflect? Um, you know, I think... I'm speaking personally, and I think it's true for most of us. We miss a lot of God's lessons for living when we just bulldoze our way, when we just go through our day without taking time to pause and tuning our ears and our hearts to listen to the Holy Spirit. Jesus gave us the Spirit of God. When we came to Jesus and we trusted him and decided we were going to follow him. Jesus said, I'm not leaving you as orphans. I'm sending you the comforter, the teacher, the one who will lead you into all truth. And he abides in us. And Jesus said, uh, he will be with you. I'm not leaving you alone. I will be with you in the power of the Holy Spirit. And I like to call the teacher, the Holy Spirit, our, the coach. He is the one who comes along and wants to coach us if we would just listen. So let me ask you, um, make that an exercise in your life, won't you, to pause and reflect and listen. Joseph was God's man to keep the family intact and ultimately uh, list, uh, fulfilling God's purpose of creating a great nation that blessed all the world, that blesses all the world. So Joseph was God's man to keep the promise alive in all that happened to him. And God's working in your life to fulfill his purposes for you, through you and in you. He is at work in you to fulfill his purposes in you and through you. Philippians 1, 6 says this, and Paul says, I am certain that God who began the good work within you will continue his work until it's finally finished on the day of Jesus Christ's return. On the day of Christ Jesus' return. God's good work who's begun in you, he will complete it until the day Jesus comes back. Isn't that a good word for you and I? I hope today that you will let the Lord speak to you, that you will walk with him, and you will be encouraged, um, even by the life of Joseph and how uh, he demonstrated God's purposes in his life. God bless you. Have a great day.